In this module, we shall study about social responsibility of business. We do so many activities in our life which we do because our family and society expects us to do so. Same is expected of business also. Business is microsm of society. As every business activity takes place within the boundaries of society, it depends, makes use of the resources offered by the society. Business too has duty in return to look after the society's overall development. So all the activities performed by the business should be closely guarded so that they will not damage, rather they will safeguard and promote the development of the society. Business organizations are no longer viewed as private bodies free to pursue their profit maximization goal. They are expected to meet to the expectations of every section of the society. Managers and directors are held responsible for the harm done to the society. As organizations grow in size, their accountability also grows. The social responsibility of business is now referred to as corporate social responsibility CSR with CSR referring to the way that businesses are managed to bring about an overall positive impact on the communities, culture, societies and environments in which they operate. After studying this module, you shall be able to understand the social orientation of business and Indian social or business environment, learn the factors affecting social orientation of business, identify the responsibilities of business towards the different sections of the society and critically examine the social involvement of business. Let us now understand the concept of social responsibility. Meaning of social responsibility. The operations of business have wide ranging effects on many sections of society, some of which may not be connected in any way with the enterprise. The shareholders, the suppliers, the customers, the government, the neighborhood community and the society at large are affected by the enterprise. An enterprise must be responsive to their needs. The suggestion is that companies should undertake its social responsibility seriously and not exclusively pay devotion to maximizing profits. Social responsibility also means emerging businesses with a positive correlation to the society in which they operate. According to the International Organization for Standardization ISO, this correlation to the society and environment in which they work is a critical factor in their ability to continue to operate effectively. It is also increasingly being used as a measure of their overall performance. As the usual form of business is corporate, the term in this context is used as corporate social responsibility. If the companies are really serious about pursuing corporate social responsibility, that is CSR, then it has to be implemented meaningfully by companies. The stakeholders affected by their business should also be consulted in defining what amount to their social responsibility. CSR is not about mere allocation of the money and fulfilling activities suggested by government. Being socially responsible means people and organization must behave ethically and with sensitivity towards social, cultural, economic and environmental issues. Continuous efforts in this direction help individual, organizations and governments to have a positive impact on development, business and society. CSR gets reflected in a positive contribution to bottom line results, profit, people and planet. The social responsibility of an organization at a given point of time has a lot to do with the economic, legal, ethical and discretionary expectations of that society. Next, definition of social responsibility. EU definition of CSR, a concept whereby companies integrate social and environmental concerns in their business operations and in their interaction with their stakeholders on a voluntary basis. Mellon Baker definition, CSR is about how companies manage the business processes to produce an overall positive impact on society. The World Business Council for Sustainable Development, WB, 
CST, Corporate Social Responsibility, is the continuing commitment by business to behave ethically and contribute to economic development while improving the quality of life of the workforce and their families as well as of the local community and society at large. Michael Hoopings, 1988. Corporate social responsibility is concerned with treating the stakeholders of a company or institution ethically or in a responsible manner. Ethically or responsible means treating key stakeholders in a manner deemed acceptable according to international norms. Let us now discuss the implications of social responsibility. Social responsibility has several implications. First, socially responsible behavior of a manager depends on his, her values, ethics and attitude. As an enterprise is run by those in control of its management, its responsible behavior is dependent on them. Second, social responsibility is an interpersonal and reciprocal relationship. As a company owes responsibility towards social groups, society too should frame policies which are favorable to company. Third, the operations of business establishments and engagement of multinationals, private and public players with communities has corporate social responsibility constitutionally inbuilt in them. A major challenge for several organizations is holding back the staff and here corporate social responsibility is often used as a tool. Fourth, good deeds of an organization can improve employee perception and directly impacts organizational commitment. In an internal study among staff cognizant, a large IT firm discovered that their volunteers gained immensely from the experience and indicated a higher sense of purpose and performance. Thinking from the employee's point of view, positive deeds of the organization directly improves its image and hence the commitment and dedication of the employee towards the organization. Cognizant, a multinational IT firm conducted an internal assessment among the staff and found out that the team attained great sense of achievement and experience. Fifth, social media is changing how responsible giving programs involve consumers and employees in newer and wide-reaching ways. With India, Home to the second largest number of Facebook users, it is no surprise to see organizations tap into the power of collective thinking, wisdom and collaboration to generate powerful messages and connect people to brands. A social media campaign called Power Light a Village by Garnier Men involves fans to electrify villages and improve lives. Sixth. The consumer's idealistic and humane concerns can become business restrictors if they are translated into strict actions. Under the Child Labor Free Consumer Act 1997 in the USA, it became mandatory to certify that the commodity was not a product of child labor. It prohibits development collaborations with the countries which support or allow child labor to continue in their land and also impose unlawful penalties for importers of such products. Let us now learn about the social orientation of business. Social orientation means a business perspective whereby a company operates in the best interest of the society as a whole. For example, a company that sells food items that are produced with techniques based on principles of ecology. The extent of social orientation varies a lot which can be explained by social responsibility models. The social involvement too may change over a time period. Social orientation refers to the theory that explains why a person has particular behaviors, relationships and adaptations with other people and or society in general. Also referred to as social dominance orientation, in some disciplines, professionals use this theory to predict behaviors, particularly with intergroup attitudes and behaviors. Carroll's model. Archie B. Carroll defines corporate social responsibility as the entire range of obligations business has towards the society. He proposed the three-dimensional model of corporate performance. It is important to pursue economic activities in a manner which maximizes profit with optimum efficiency. 
it is important to earn profit in a way which is not based on dishonest competition. It should be of good quality and which supports sustainable development. Legal responsibilities are also very important because company has to comply within legal framework. It has to be a law abiding citizen. Ethical responsibilities are responsibilities of business based on moral standards or values of the society. Philanthropic or discretionary activities are important because it is important to perform activities according to expectations of society. Managers and employees must participate in voluntary development of local community. Carol presented the different categories of corporate social responsibility in the form of a pyramid. Economic responsibility is at the lowest level, legal responsibility at the second lowest, ethical responsibility at the next higher level and finally philanthropic responsibility at the highest level. Next, e-halals return on resources model. Though there was general acceptance for the concept of stakeholder management, but its main theory of balancing interest was predominantly abundant during the 1990s as companies favored shareholders profit maximization interest rather than the balanced treatment proposed by stakeholder theory. Logically too, it is difficult to ignore and there is not enough incentive to do otherwise. Conventionally, managers don't view looking after other stakeholders as economic value and competitive advantage to the firm. Rather, they consider them only in terms of morality, ethics and social responsibility. This model presents an economic theory of the firm and supporting evidence that reconciles the conflict between profitability and responsibility. Other stakeholders and managers work together for their own benefit to increase earnings of the corporate rather than just being passive recipients of responsible treatment. Thus, the integration of stakeholders results into a new role of corporate community, the wealth creating role. Profitability and social responsibility are often considered opposite to each other, as each caters to opposite halves of the corporation's sphere. They tend to neglect relationships between these two crucial proportions. Management and governance thus become a zero sum game, as economic consideration is must essential for survival, social consideration takes a backseat. In an attempt to clear up this confusion, this model examines the various elements that make up the relationship between stakeholders and the corporation. Conflict resolution indicates how destructive tools can be avoided. Equity theory explains why social responsibility may produce commensurate financial benefits. Economics points out the need to compete for stakeholder resources. Political science describes how coalitions among management and stakeholders gain mutual commitment and organizational learning, knowledge and dialogue explain how stakeholder collaboration can produce creative strategies that benefit all parties. Next is extent of involvement in social orientation. On the basis of the extent of social orientation and involvement of companies in social responsibilities, the following categories have been observed. Antisocial. These companies have no social orientation. These companies take advantage of loopholes and follow malpractices like insider trading, price rigging, etc. Rather than respecting the rule of the laws and regulations. Sometimes these organizations fake their real faces of antisocial activities by spending on social welfare programs. Indifferent. These are companies which have no social orientation. These companies are interested in meeting only legal requirements. They consider social obligations to be the responsibility of government and other social organizations. Borderline. These companies are a level better than the indifferent companies. They are somewhat socially oriented. Next, socially oriented. These companies have high level of social orientation. Given the fact that they have enough financial resources, their involvement for social causes will rise. Next, committed and active. 
these companies have highest level of social orientation. They are totally committed to social welfare activities and have enough resources to commit for such programs. In the figure, you can see the extent of involvement of companies in social orientation. Next, the factors affecting social orientation of business. Board of Directors. The Board of Directors decide the major policies and manage the resource allocation. Hence, the orientation of Board of Directors is an important influence of social orientation. Next, Promoters and Top Management. These are the people who are in control of resources and give directions. Their values and vision influence the company's social orientation. Next, Stakeholders and internal power relationships. Shareholders, creditors, employees, etc. affect the internal power relationships which also affect the social orientations of the company. As suggested by Halal's model, a firm can only be attempt to unify their diverse interests to come to a workable solution in creating value for distribution among members of the coalition. Next, great for business if the business keeps focus on the bottom line that is profit it leads to missed opportunities and additional revenue over the period businesses with a social mission outdo 10.5 to 1 over their competitors next brand loyalty consumers are not driven by cause related advertisements consumers action are guided by the fact that their purchase is going to have positive effect on society Researchers show that consumers are willing to pay 20% more than the similar brand without a social mission. Next, societal factors. General attitude and expectation of society also influence the social orientation of the company. A blue ship firm located in the poverty stricken is expected to contribute to the development, education and health facilities. The expectation depends on the different social conditions. Next, industry and trade associations. The social behavior of the firm is also influenced by the level of industry and trade association. These institutions establish professional and ethical codes, norms, education and collective decisions. Government and laws. Laws are enacted according to society's codification of right and wrong, which businesses must obey. Legislations to curb corruption unfair practices etc are different according to different countries what is right may not be right in some other country the social orientation would also depend on the government's view of social responsibility and the lower and earnestness of the government agencies in dealing with defaulting companies pressure from different groups political influences include pressure exerted by special interest groups in society and media to control business practices. Non-governmental organizations, NGOs like consumer interest groups, environmentalist and animal rights group use a variety of methods to pursue government and public agencies to adopt regulatory measures and public awareness campaigns. Financial resources. Some companies are known to be highly socially oriented but are constrained by the lack of financial resources. Hence, they may have to forego social orientation for the time being. Corporate citizenship. This concept has been emerged in 19th century which considers that institutions are citizens and hence have social and civic responsibilities. A corporation has similar rights and duties as that of a natural person. Attracts and retains top talent. A social mission attracts top talent. According to a Deloitte survey, 70% of competent people are willing to take less compensation to work for a business that is socially responsible. Moreover, Gallup studies says that employees are 87% less likely to leave such job. Professionalism. Separation of ownership from management has replaced owner-manager by paid manager in large companies. Since managers have no stake in ownership, they take long-term and more responsible view of their role. Trusteeship. Business managers are caretakers of company's property, holding it interest for the society as a whole. 
the more fortunate members of the society should help in the upliftment of the less fortunate fraternity. Enlightened self-interest, globalization and privatization and spread of education have led society to be concerned with the quality of life. Businesses recognize the social objectives and are willing to become agents of change. Moving further, let us now understand corporate social responsibility in India. Traditional image of business in India. Conventionally, business does not enjoy a good public image. Adulteration, bribery, black marketing, hoarding, tax evasion, exploitation of labor and other such activities are considered as characteristics of any business. Social responsibility has always been regarded as the responsibility of the state. Even in the Vedic era, public welfare was a responsibility of the state. At the same time, religion played a major role in encouraging charitable activities. Our scriptures teach about using wealth for charity, doing sacrifice and discharging debt. Hindu merchants made contribution to temples, ashrams, pundits. Land, cattle and food were given as gifts in rituals. Jainism also taught its followers to do charity and build hospitals, rent houses and libraries. Islam proposed a certain percentage wealth to be sacrificed for charity. Christianity too strongly promoted philanthropy. Corporate social responsibility is not a new concept in India. Indian business organization have been conscious of their responsibilities towards the society because of its culture and religion. The large contribution made for philanthropic purpose should be considered as a part of CSR in today's context. Ever since its inception, corporates like Tata Group, Aditya Billa Group and Indian Oil Corporation to name a few have been involved in serving the community. Tatas have spent the highest amount on social service in the country. They have been spending on rural development, community health, education and women empowerment. Next, Indian corporate doing CSR. For example, a more comprehensive method of development is adopted by some corporations such as Bharat Petroleum Corporation Limited, Maruti Suzuki India Limited and Hindustan Unilever Limited. Provision of improved medical and sanitation facilities, building schools and houses and empowering the villagers in process of making them more self-reliant by providing vocational training and providing knowledge of business operations or facilities that these corporations focus on. On the other hand, the CSR programs of corporations like GlaxoSmithKline Pharmaceuticals focus on the health aspect of the community. Various other companies and industries have contributed in promoting CSR. ITC Group has initiated eChoppers and presented its first corporate sustainability report in 2002. Tata Energy Research Institute is well known for environment advocacy and conservation. Aditya Billa Group has been helping disabled people. Reliance Industries Limited contribution to the community are in areas of health, education, infrastructure development, drinking water, improving village infrastructure, construction of schools, etc. Environment, effluent treatment, tree plantation, treatment of hazardous waste, relief and assistance in the event of a natural disaster and miscellaneous activities such as contribution to other social development organizations, etc. CSR a coordinated movement. Also, corporate increasingly join hands with non-government organization, NGOs and use their expertise in devising programs which address wider social problems. For example, a lot of work is being undertaken to rebuild the lives of the tsunami affected victims. This is exclusively undertaken by SAP India in partnership with Home Foundation and NGO that focuses mainly on bringing about improvement in the lives of the poor and needy. SAP Labs Center of Hope in Bangalore was started by this venture which looks after the food, clothing, shelter and medical care of street children. Next, the roles of some of the organizations doing CSR in India. The roles of some of the organization doing CSR in India are following. Confederation of Indian Industry, CII. 
CII has set up Social Infrastructure Development Council in 1995. The objective of SIDC are to promote industrial growth, economic reform, holistic community development, better corporate development and empowerment of business. Next, Federation of Indian Chamber of Commerce and Industry, FICI. FICI has instituted CSR award which is for best practices of Indian companies. The companies recognized by FICI in the last decade include Tata, Canara Bank, Ambuja Cement, Sale, etc. Next, Solution Delivery Center SDC Partners. SDC works in partnership with Government of India. It has also signed MOU with state governments, UNDP, UNESCO, WHO for development in the area of education, health, etc. Next, Indian Partnership Forum IPF. CII and UNDP have set up the Indian Partnership Forum to promote CSR. Through this, it insists on companies to sign Global Compact, GC. The Ministry of Corporate Affairs prepared a set of voluntary guidelines in 2009 which indicate some of the core elements that businesses need to focus on. Next, Provisions of the Companies Act 2013 for CSR. Under this act, any company having a net worth of rupees 500 crore or more or a turnover of rupees 1000 crore or more or a net profit of rupees 5 crore or more should mandatory spend 2% of their net profits pre-fiscal on CSR activities. They will have to constitute a corporate social responsibility committee of the board consisting of three or more directors out of which at least one director shall be an independent director. If they are not able to spend 2% of the average net profits in pursuance of the corporate social responsibility policy, the board shall in its report specify the reasons for not spending the amount. Let us now understand the responsibility of business towards various stakeholders. Increase the profits. Nobel Prize winner economist Milton Friedman wrote in 1970 that there is only one responsibility of business and that is to increase its profit, assuming an honest and open marketplace. And those who were disagreed with this assertion were preaching pure and adulterated socialism as per the opinion of Friedman. Next, put the customers first. Although profits are indeed the core element of running a business, but the modern businesses must create value for all of its constituents. It has been seen that successful companies like Tata have put their customers on priority. It may not ensure more profits, but it does ensure that customer happiness is an end in itself, which leads to greater customer loyalty. The case for shared value. The shared value model does not redistribute wealth. Instead, shared value refers to business and society working together to increase profits and improve society at the same time, according to January 2011 businessethics.com article. In this new model, the business achieves economic success because it addresses society's needs and challenges. Although the framework for the shared value business model isn't yet clear. Ideally, the betterment of society should be at the core of the business beliefs. Shareholder versus society. When the company grows, the stakeholders who are funding the operation should earn a greater return on their investment. Much like a shark, a company must move forward. If it does not, it dies, taking employees and stakeholders along with it. Let us now study the critical appraisal of social responsibility of business. Ethical and discretionary responsibilities of a business firm are listed in the order of priority. First, a business has to satisfy its economic responsibilities, followed by fulfilling legal responsibilities in order to survive in the market. Only then it can think about or focus on purely voluntary actions pertaining to ethical consideration. In this competitive market situation, a business unit has to concentrate on profit making. The primary motive behind any business activity. Sometimes businesses are criticized for having profit maximizing objective, but a business unit cannot fulfill its social commitment if it is not economically sound. However, it is easier said than done. You cannot hit the bull's eye at the very first attempt. A firm has to 
become economically stable first only then it integrates social commitment in its agenda next arguments for social responsibility public image socially responsible firms gain more customers and employees feel proud to work for such organizations next handling the government regulations with ease government is a massive institution with long arms it seeks to regulate business in public interest before government stretches its long arms business persons should discharge their obligations to society next business is resourceful with a pool of resources such as capital labor and expertise business is in a better position to tackle social problems and work for social goals next let business try it is that many other institutions have failed in handling social problems so why should not a business enterprise handle social problems next prevention is better than cure social problems have to be handled by the management at some point of time or the other problems with labor unions should be handled in a diplomatic way so that they will not develop into serious social breakdown that consumes most of the management's time next as a token of gratitude business units benefit from society based on the commonly accepted principle that one owes step of gratitude towards those who benefits us the corporation have debts that it owes to society next is arguments against social responsibility profit maximization is the ultimate goal businesses are sometimes criticized for having profit maximization as their goal since business operates in a world of poverty and hunger the economic efficiency of business is a matter of priority and should be the sole mission of business next society has to pay the cost the cost of social responsibility is passed on to the customer vis-a-vis -vis society in the form of increased prices and the question arises can society bear these additional cost let us now recapitulate what we have learned so far social responsibility entails developing businesses with a positive relationship to the society which they operate in social orientation follows the theoretical models explained by rcb carroll and e halal which explains why a person has particular behavior relationships and adaptations with other people and or society in general thank you